You're watching a KCCI 8 Sports Special, the Iowa State Cyclones versus the Kansas Jayhawks, live from Hilton Coliseum. This is Hoops Hysteria. Our fans are excited. We know how important it is to be at our best. This is a game that has been on the books for a lot, a lot of years. Now we just need to carry forward tomorrow. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Hilton Coliseum. We are less than an hour away from the biggest game on the college basketball schedule nationally today. Iowa State, Kansas, two top 25 teams, 1230 tip time here on KCCI. But we've got hoops hysteria for you. The fans been camping out for days to get inside the building, and they are now here among us at Hilton Coliseum, and so are we. Hi, everyone. Scott Rice here, Jeff Dubroff, Shannon Earhart with you, and we have been looking forward to this day for a long time. Yeah, not just us. I was talking to some fans earlier. They started camping out for this game on Wednesday night <laughs> before the Kansas State tip-off. Um, by the way, the only time these two teams play this year, you know the crowd's juiced up for this one. Oh, absolutely. It's not in Fall Gallon. It's right here in Hilton Coliseum. Yeah. You know the Big 12 promises pain, and this is going to be a painful game between the two teams. They hate each other. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a heated battle. Let's take a look at these two teams. They always bring it. Iowa State and Kansas. What a matchup we have. 7th ranked Jayhawks, 23rd ranked Cyclones. A win today for Iowa State would be huge in this heated Big 12 race. Here's a look at the best conference in America, Jeff. Iowa State and Kansas are in a four-way tie for second place. Just a half game behind Texas Tech. And what's exciting is Texas Tech plays at number 11 Oklahoma today. So if Tech loses, the winner here today will move into first place. Yeah, really exciting. And Iowa State has just been on a tear lately. They've won four of their last five. Their only loss in that stretch at number 20 BYU and look they don't lose in this building they beat Kansas State Wednesday night give the Cyclones a 12-0 record through two-thirds of the home slate here at Hilton Coliseum Iowa State averaging 80 and a half points per game 48.4 field goal percentage and their three-point shooting percentage just okay could be better eighth best in the Big 12 and they make just under 70 percent of their free throws today's monster matchup will be a true test for this Cyclone offense Kansas can be beat. The Jayhawks have lost two of their last three road games last Saturday. It was unranked West Virginia that took them out 91-85. They also lost at UCF. They bounced back earlier in the week, winning a game at home against Cincinnati 74-69. The Jayhawks are averaging around 79 points per game so far this season, shooting just under 51% from the field, 74% from the charity stripe. Kansas has scored 90 points or more over their past two games. It's an offense that's looking good at the moment. Yeah, Jeff, that offense is lethal, like you said. As we get closer to tip, who's making those shots? I'll tell you some key players to watch out for. Number 15, Kevin McCuller. The Kansas guard is their primary playmaker. He's shooting almost 50%, averaging 20 points per game and six rebounds. You may recognize Hunter Dickinson, who transferred from Michigan at 7-2. 7-2, you guys, he's KU's most reliable offensive weapon. How could he not be? Averages 19 points per game and 60% from the field. Dickinson's 11 boards per game makes him the fifth best rebounder in the country. Devon Harris Jr., he's the floor general here. His stats don't pop off the chart, but the pass first point guard wheels and deals. He averages almost seven assists a game, hardly ever turning over the ball, doesn't shoot a whole lot. For Iowa State, it's no secret Damon Lipsy is Iowa's M.O., averaging points, 14 points per game, five rebounds, three steals, second most in the country with 44% field goal percentage. Remember, he suffered a shoulder injury last week, but production didn't drop drastically. Big man Rob Jones, he's unlocked a new level this season. He's scoring up 50% from last season, averaging almost nine points a game and draining 67% from the field. And Cyclone forward Trey King, he's been clutch in transition, shooting 54% with nine points per game and five rebounds. King has worked on making himself more dependable from the free throw line. 
the big man who spends a lot of time in the paint is shooting 83% from the charity strike. Yeah, Trey King's got a phenomenal story. We're going to hear that from Jeff Dubrock. I know you spoke to him earlier, and I can't wait to hear that. But uh, I would say, for my money, is the straw that stirs the Cyclone drink, Taman Lipsy. Yeah, absolutely. And Taman Lipsy hurt himself in that BYU game, a shoulder sprain. However, he did return to action on Wednesday night against Kansas State. And you said it, Scott, he is the straw that stirs the drink. You saw him have a nice game, three rebounds, six assists, eight points. Box score may not say much, but his presence on the court means so much than the stats suggest. While Coach T.J. Osselberger says it wasn't his best game, he puts out the best effort no matter what. Yeah, I mean, Tatum's a warrior. I mean, just, you know, again, he's as tough as they come. You know, certainly wasn't his best game uh, by any stretch, but um, he's a guy that, you know, in those type of games where they're physical, uh, he finds a way to make enough plays. Cyclones have pulled off some impressive wins so far this season, and some, Shannon, happened right here on Hilton Coliseum's floor. You're talking about Houston was number two at the time. Iowa State knocked them off. And then just Wednesday, Cyclone Nation was here. They took out then first place Kansas State. Just really impressive wins. Iowa State proving they can beat anybody here. Yeah, it's much of the same for the women's side. They sent two phenomenal teams packing first, number 24, West Virginia, 74 to 64, and then number four, Baylor, 66 to 63. It's been a heck of a season for the women's team with how young those players are. And I mean, you have to say that both Iowa State men and women here in Ames have convincing wins. You could argue Hilton Coliseum is one of the toughest venues in the country. Don't believe it? Hilton magic is almost as powerful as God. Probably people that have never came here wouldn't quite understand what it is, but if you've been here, it grows with you. 14,500 unhinged Cyclone fans. You get the crowd really involved, and there's not really a quiet moment unless we're on offense. And just weird things seem to happen when we're here, and just there's no other way to explain it than Hilton Magic. However loud you think it can get, however much energy you think it can have, double it. And then after you experience it one time, don't expect it to be that loud, expect it to be louder the next time. Anybody who's got to go against it, sorry for you, but it's going to be a long night. Hilton Magic has frustrated opposing teams for decades. Was going to be the easiest of the three we have left. You know, when you have a, such a great home court advantage, it, it is the easiest. From 1999 to 2001, Iowa State won 39 straight games at Hilton Coliseum, the second best in the country. It was big then, and I think it's it's never it's never ceased to be big. The Cyclones are trending in that direction. <laughs> with the perfect 12-0 record at home this season. At Hilton, you could argue the clones play with a sixth man. It's nice, especially on the defensive end, to have a bunch of noise where they can't really run offense, can't really talk through things. And... As soon as Juicy Wiggle comes on here, you know it's over. Hilton Magic shows its power. Greatest, most energetic, most hyped song known to Cyclone Nation. And when we play a rival, it only makes it that much more energetic. The crowd gets into it, and they're into it for a good while afterward. And when you get the crowd going, it's just impossible for the opposing team to hear anything or get anything done. Hilton Magic is something even more than loudness. Hilton Magic is how you feel when you come in this house. We showed you fans who have camped out for days here at Hilton Coliseum. Could you guys call this place home? Yeah, I guess so. And up next, why they cheer so hard for the man named Trey King. Stick around, Hoops Hysteria is back after this.
Yeah, but who? All right, welcome back to Hoops Hysteria here at Hilton Coliseum and Cyclones, Jayhawks coming up at 12.30 and I say the Iowa State Cyclones have the players to get it done, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that has been pieced together over the years, enhanced by transfers all coming together, sort of a family. One of those players this year starting to play a pivotal role, Scott, the journey he's taken to get here uh, one of a kind. Iowa State forward Trey King will always remember the day. It was hard. He was told he couldn't play basketball. I think we were like just finishing practice or something or about to do workouts and all that stuff. And um, he brought me into his office and told me that, you know, the decision was made and that my waiver was denied. King was a two time transfer. He started his career at Eastern Kentucky, transferred to Georgetown before leaving shortly after arriving and wound up at Iowa State. Transfer twice, sit out a year. That was the rule. Trey King knew the risk. When I came here and we talked about the waiver process, I mean, we knew that, you know, there was a chance that it wasn't going to go through. But it didn't numb the pain of sitting out an entire basketball season. It's kind of like um, when you're like right next to like something that you really want, like that piece of candy your dessert and something like you're just like right within this grasp, like you just can't reach it. A full season, no games, no playing time, nothing. It didn't stop King, however, from doing everything he could to make an impact. Just trying to be a great teammate, a great cheerleader, a great encourager. He wouldn't be eligible until winter break of 2022. Trey King will always remember the day. My first game was December 18th against Western Michigan. The feeling of waking up that morning. Man, it felt like Christmas Day and birthdays and every great holiday all rolled into one. Knowing he was about to play basketball again. The greatest feeling in the world. And he'll never forget the moment. My stomach dropped. Of having his number called. <laughs> and having his first collegiate bucket in over a year. Where does that moment rank in kind of just your playing career of things you'll never forget? Honestly, it might be number one. I can't even lie. I mean, I remember the exact play. Comes Whoopsie the other way. Taman driving, leaves it underneath for Trey King and a two-hand dunk for Trey. His first bucket as a cyclone comes off a pretty assist from Taman Lipsy. I mean, I'll never forget it. A dunk that had been routine for King throughout the year was anything but in this moment. This was the official beginning of his fresh start, the beginning of his newest chapter. Definitely had his ups and his downs, but you know, it's been, it's been something worthwhile. Everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, uh, there was a reason why I had to go through it. And, and, you know, there were lessons that I gained from it that I probably wouldn't have learned and, uh, if I didn't. So, I mean, yeah, it was frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, I'm just grateful that I even get to play the game of basketball again because, you know, you never know when, when the game uh, can be taken from you, you know, at a moment's notice. So now I'm just more appreciative for, for the opportunities that I have now and, and for what's ahead. Yeah, great story of Trey King and a good amount of success though, Scott, has to go to TJ Osselberger of the coach, third year here, uh, took over the program coming off one of its worst years in history. Yeah, the worst year from a conference standpoint, three years ago, Coach Steve Probe had this team winless in the Big 12 as the bottom fell out, Jamie Pollard, the AD here, made the change. And here we have TJ Otzelberger stepping in, always seemed to be the man for the job once he got this opportunity. He was a former assistant at Iowa State, and then he went on as an assistant in Washington, followed by, of course, time at UNLV, where he was very successful and led them back. TJ, now in his third year, they made the dance last two seasons. They're 56 and 31 here at Iowa State. They're a projected five seed right now as well, Jeff. Yeah, now TJ obviously, the calling card for his coaching style, relentless defense, and they have one of the best defenses in the country. Yeah. Uh, high ball pressure, tons of steals, drive opponents crazy, right? Yeah, when people are playing against Iowa State, they are miserable. I mean, they attack the ball relentlessly. It's really fun to watch. Yeah, it really is. Look at these numbers right here. The Cyclones only allow 61 points per game. They are fifth in steals per game, 11.3. Last week, they had 17 steals in the first half. Lipsy is second best in the country in steals per game, 3.2. And when it comes to a close game down the stretch, that defensive intensity, Scott, is everything. 
uh, where we like to focus our mental uh, attention is on the details defensively, finishing plays on the glass, and then that turning into offense. So I, th I feel like our guys, you see a lot more confidence when we're able to do that job than when we're at a point in the game where it feels like baskets are being traded. Kansas compared to Iowa State's defensive rankings is much lower. The Jayhawks 90th overall in steals per game, just seven. However, in rebounds defensively, the team is in the top 25. That's Hunter Dickinson down low. That's the work he does, 28 rebounds per game. Summing the Cyclones are not even close to ranked 260th. Have to see how that turns out today. Yeah, they're going to have to do better for sure. Now, when you talk about paying Kansas, the Jayhawks, eight of nine against the Cyclones, but when you look at it here at Hilton Coliseum, it's been a different story. Iowa State, four of the last 10, four and five over the last nine, actually, I should say. But most importantly, Jeff, this game last year, 68-53, Hilton Magic did its thing. KU came in ranked eighth. Iowa State undefeated at home, and they stayed that way. Tame and Lipsy had 10 assists in the win. When the game is at Hilton, over the past 10 years, Iowa State is four and five since 2015, and if you look at the overall series, though, dating back to 1908, Clone's got some work to do, Jeff. Yeah, just a bit, you'd say. <laughs> just a bit. Uh, KU, 190 and 67 against the Clones. Right. Time to take a quick break. The players change every year. When we come back, Curtis Jones from high school hero to basketball odyssey. How we got back, and we'll also catch up with the voice of the Cyclones, John Walters, when we come back on Hoops Hysteria here at Hilton. dreamed of being in, even though at one point it seemed pretty far away. Curtis Jones was a star at Creighton Durham High School in St. Paul, Minnesota. He even hit this game-winning buzzer beater to win the section championship <laughs> and was hoping this magical moment would lead to Division I looks. But... COVID ended up happening, so... You know, we would have played the state tournament, but that didn't happen. So I was hoping I would get an offer there. But since we didn't play it, I didn't have an opportunity to play in that. So uh, I had to go the Juco route, and Indian Hills came in kind of late. While at Community College in Ottumwa, it was all hoops. Being in the small town, COVID rules, we couldn't really, like, leave the room and stuff like that. Just had to go to practice and, you know, win games. His all-around game shined in that 2021 20, season. 
12.1 points, six boards, and five and a half assists per contest. I ended up with a few offers out of there. Jones with the steal, step over move, layup good. Jones wound up signing with Buffalo, but barely got off the bench his first year in New York. I came in, you know, to a situation where there was a lot of other guys on the team, so it was just an opportunity for me to learn and just get adjusted to the D1 game. Obviously, there's a difference physically. And, you know, once I adjust and figure things out, I really figure it out. He went from averaging two and a half points to 15 a game last year as a junior to lead the Buffalo Bulls. It's worked hard in the offseason, really hard, had the opportunity and took advantage of the opportunity. You know, I was uh, used to the Division One game now, got a little bigger, so coaches and teammates trusted me to take that step. Curtis Jones took a bump, spins in the lane, runner will fall. Top colleges around the country came calling. Ohio State, Clemson, Iowa State. It was like mind blowing to me, really. I have a screenshot on my phone, like one day all the texts that I got, and it was from all these schools. Now I'm just like, wow, it kind of blew me away. Iowa State recruited him the hardest, and now <laughs> he's right at home. On the big stage in the Big 12, quickly becoming one of Iowa State's best players. He's averaging over nine points a game. He's second on the team in steals and third in assists. The guy who once had zero offers plays with a chip on his shoulder, always trying to prove he belongs. But now that I'm here, you know, I'm grateful to be here and trying to take advantage of the opportunity. How do you not root for a guy like that? Awesome story. And now we're joined by John Walters, voice of the Cyclones in his 21st year. These transfers come together, and I don't know how TJ does it, but the chemistry that we've seen from them, really sensational. How do you think they've been able to gel so quickly? I think in today's college basketball, Scott, roster management is every bit as big a deal of coaching as there is. I mean, how you assemble your roster. Can you find guys that are the right fit and are going to buy into what you want to do? And in Curtis Jones and Jackson Pavletsky, Keyshawn Gilbert, too, he's been able to find guys that really accept what they want from them and want to be a part of this system. Look at it, Kansas. Hunter Dickinson, 7'2". Seven, seven, is he really 7'2"? I think so, at least. Yeah. yeah, he's a load. And so, you know, Rob Jones, Hassan Ward have both been playing really well. I think they have to try to wear out Dickinson. They don't have a particularly deep bench. So I think if they can really kind of run the floor, rim run, use their athleticism to kind of wear down Dickinson over the course of a 40-minute game, that's how Iowa State kind of has to approach it. But he's a load. And once he catches it down low, you're not going to stop him. Is there something you've seen from Iowa State in the last couple of games that they've got to do better in order not just to hang with Kansas, but to beat a top team in the nation like the Jayhawks? I think so. I think they have to push their defense out. I think they have to be really aggressive defensively. Their bread and butter is forcing turnovers. They can do that and get this crowd involved. I think it'll be a great day. Well, I do not think the crowd will be a problem. <laughs> Jeff and Shannon. There are the keys to the game from John Walters. Well, next, uh, we're going to figure out soon if it comes to fruition. Yeah, you know, I don't know who's going to win this game today. There's a lot on the line. It could move the needle in the NCAA standings. What our predictions are coming up soon.
Welcome back to Hoops Hysteria. Time for predictions. I'm going with the home team, Iowa State. Woo! Yeah, there you go. I, I think I have to agree. I'm taking Iowa State in this one, 67-60. Defense pulls it out. I have to follow the trend. I predict oh, the no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 2-1, Milan Momchilovich, big game for the freshman. We'll see. TBS Inside College Basketball is up next. The game tips at 12.30 right here on KCCI. From Keenan Earhart, Jeffrey Ruff, Kayla LaGrange, and photographer Robbie Risman. Thanks for watching Hoops Hysteria. Enjoy the game.